when I was growing up before I reached my teenage years and I was an adolescent, it didn't really feel like much because I knew, you, as a kid, you know who you are and don't really have any restrictions as to how you should uh, portray your sex. And it wasn't about having sex, it was about how I felt as a person. And I was so open about expressing my femininity and my parents had no problem about it. When I reached my puberty, although it came late and all these male secondary characteristics are coming and um, my body becoming masculine, that's when I started hating my body quite a lot more. Yeah. And the fact that I was in the puberty and I had to really present as a boy, being an African boy, there is this pressure on you to really be a man. And going for family functions, you have to dress up as a boy. Um, how you speak, people always ask you to speak like a man. It was a lot of pressure. So when you're in nursery and then they bring dolls and toys, they just throw them there. And of course, the boys always scatter for that. For the for the um, for the cars and all these action ninjas and me, I was getting just the babies and and the doll and the baby dolls and combing their hair and they weren't really enough at school because there were very many girls in the in school in the school where I was so there were there were less dolls and then I was really crying for this doll. So when my mom came to pick me at midday, because that's, that's how long we stay at school, they told her, your boy, your kid was quarreling, was fighting the other, with the other girls for dolls. Why doesn't he play with, um, with toys, with, with all these cars and wagons like the other boys do? So my mom didn't really have an answer to this. And I, I don't, she didn't have any information about all these transgender tendencies and kids that you ought to watch for as a parent. And she just brushed it off. When I used to dress, dress more feminine, she would just brush it off. When I was in high school, in, in my second year in high school, and you had to go for primary education, for physical education, and you have, the boys have to remove their shirts because they have nothing to present in the, on their chest, and they like running around wild. And then they're asking me to remove my shirt. I told them I cannot do that. So I remember the teacher who was teaching us physical education that they had to call my mom. They dismissed me and told me to come back with my mom. So I tell my mom, I've been dismissed because I refused to remove my shirt during physical education. Huh. So, she, so she's like, why? I don't want to do it. I just tell her, tell him I have some asthma. So she goes, and already at this time, she already knows that I have a very feminine boy. So she goes to school and tells this guy, um, my kid has asthma, and then he's asking him why doesn't he have any medical documentation to bring with it, and then she's saying she didn't bring them, and they don't really have anything to bring. And then the, uh, the, case, the case was just dropped, and then they just left me for the weird kid, in, like, that kid is weird. And so all through physical education, it was hard for me to, to go for those lessons, because first of all, they would separate us between the boys and the girls. And then I would have to play with the boys, which was really hard for me, because the boys had to play football and all these very boyish games. I remember this one time they, we had to score a ball into the tent, into the net, and I fell to, and I was really close, and I, and I just fell to, and they gave me three trials, and that was, that was that. If you score the goal into the t into the net, then you would get a, a pass mark for the practical course. And I failed to just do it. And if I had a 98 in the theory for physical education, I told her, I'm not just athlete, I'm not really athletic, I'm, an ath no, I'm not a very athletic person. So, but it was all because um, I wasn't into all these boy things. I remember one time trying to play football with my brother and then he, he played with a ball so much that I fell on, on, my, on my ass and I said, and it hurt so much and I said, I'll never play football ever again. That was the first and only time I, Second and only time I ever played football, and ever since then, whenever I see a, a ball, a football, like people are playing football because they normally do in, here in Uganda, boys get a pitch and they start playing football. It I have a phobia for footballs. I actually have a phobia for footballs because I think if they kick it my direction, then they will need me to kick it back, and I will not know how to kick it back. It's <laughs> it's very funny like that. 
Growing up, later when I went to my university and left home, because all through the time when I was growing up, I was I wasn't homeschooled, but I started five minutes. I would I would go to school five minutes away from home. And that is very protective of his children. And almost all of us went to day schools that were just five minutes away from school, from home. So he would expect you back at five or five thirty to be back home. Yeah. And I'll be back at five or five thirty. There's nothing much I was really involved in because yeah, I used to be bullied by by my peers at school. I used to be bullied as I walked back home, people calling me girl boy. Oh boy, girl, all these things, yeah. So I would walk with my head down and just walk back home. It was a very hard thing to deal with. And I, at home, I felt safe. I mean, and even at home, with all these people and all these things going on in puberty, I wasn't involved in any of that because my my life didn't rhyme with any of my on, on my sisters or my brothers. There's nothing when they were doing relationships that they were having. Sex, I was doing nothing with my life because I was attracted to boys. And there's no one I would do. I would tell this to. Um, when I reached my university and I had to stay away from home for quite a long time, um, I felt more free from being around my father. I was more free to express my agenda, more free to do and and say things I felt like doing. That's the first time I even ever dated.